pretty cool. But, um, let's see. Alright. Oh, yeah. So, here. So, this guy uh, has taken and uh, I don't know if you can see, but the inside of the sword has that like weird curvy thing going on right here. So, that was that original piece that he smashed together. Um, so, that's a really cool Damascus part. And then he's taking these ground that down. Um, each of these sides is a really nice, like, kitchen knife style steel. And then he made it into a point at the end. Um, so what he's going to do now is he's going to take and temper it. Um, so tempering is actually what happens uh, to, like, all modern knife blades. It's a way of making sure that you're actually able to um, keep a really firm edge while not necessarily being too brittle. Um, so you actually take and heat up something to a specific uh, point that's based on chemistry. Um, and then you'll quench it. Um, so you go from really hot to room temperature almost immediately. Um, then you actually take it and you throw it again in your mother's oven at 300 degrees for about two hours or so. Um, and then that'll take and it'll remove all the, uh, the internal stresses so that you actually won't break. Um, that's kind of weird because like, it really sucks the first time you spent a lot of time on a sword and then it breaks because you didn't do it right. Um, and that's like 12 hours you just wasted. Um, so right now he's throwing this in a really nice furnace that again I did not have. Um, I just dug a ditch in my mother's yard and uh, I would put a bunch of coal in it. And then I would cover it with a bunch of rocks, and then I would use a leaf blower to blow through and get the coal uh, to get to the temperature you need. And then I pull it out and I punch it. So he's going to get way, 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 way high. Um, and then he's going to pull it out, and then he's going to punch it in poly oil. Um, so, odd, odd thing, I, it was just an interesting factual issue. Um, I got to go see a blacksmith work. Um, he said he never used gloves. Um, so he actually made me promise that I would never ever use gloves while I was blacksmithing. Um, because you are more likely to hurt yourself if you grab something with a glove because you won't realize it's hot or it's done a lot of damage. Um, so I actually have quite a few scars on my hands because I don't use gloves. Um, but it also makes you absurdly careful. So um, in this guy's case, you got a good old uh, leather apron and he's going to throw this in a, a bat of oil. And then he's punching that in the oil. That brings it down to a uh, room temperature of 300 degrees or something really close, not 2,000. Um, and then, just so you see the results of his handiwork, I'll show you the, the last little bit. This will kind of explain how you wrap it. Um, so he's taking right now and he's checking the thickness of the blade. So we'll actually use brining stuff to make sure it's all the right thickness. Um, and then once it's kind of satisfactory, he'll take and he'll find the center of balance. Um, find the center of balance because you know how much weight you have to add to the end to be able to swing around. Um, now he's belt sanding it. The belt sanding is going to be pretty sharp. Um, it's already been uh, tempered, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and then lots of sanding, so much sanding, oh, so much sanding. Um, that knife, uh, this is another case, uh, took me. Uh, probably about three or four hours of sanding to get to the point where I liked it. Um, and that's not in your finish like this guy's gonna have to um, This guy's gonna work really, really long. Um, and now this is actually an acid. So he takes and he, um, again, does the whole Damascus, gives me an acid. The uh, softer metals on the inside, you can see here, are colors. And now he's taking and he's gonna scrape it all off. And you'll end up with a really interesting, like, flat, um, polish, but you'll be able to see the, the actual spirals in the middle of it. Um, what's really kind of weird is this is like what a samurai sword classically looks like. You know, it has a little wave on the edge. Um, that's like a harmonic. Um, and that's where the, uh, that's where it's both a little bit of Damascus, but also when you punch it, where the, who took material science? Who's taking material science? Did, I don't know, you probably didn't have to. Did you have to take, none of you had to? Dang. Okay. So, when you punch something fast, it turns into your glass. Uh, or it turns into smaller, and it, depending on how fast it um, cools, it'll have larger or smaller grains. Um, so in the Samurai Sword, the Haman, which is that little wavy thing, um, is because the um, sword cooled really fast in the edge, and didn't cool as fast in the middle. So, this is the final result, all this weird spirally stuff that you had. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. So, Yeah. Uh, with all the tools we 
had, I'm going to guess, a budget, a budget for you. Um, the swords I made, I purposely don't bring to like a mirror finish because I'm just going to use a hack or something. Um, so when I make a sword, it probably takes 20 hours. Um, but I'm also not using really high quality steel. I use welder stock um, because I cheat. Um, so welder stock is just a really dumb, like, my odds to be by home depot. Um, but it's also one of the stuff I can really get reliable. So you go spend six bucks and you get a bar of steel you made. Um, and it actually shouldn't punch, um, and it shouldn't harden when you punch it, but the theory is that there's actually enough lead in it, because it's all made in China, um, that it will actually get hardened uh, when you punch it. So it's really just a chunky, chunky piece of steel. Um, so this guy is effectively taking it, uh, it's like sharpening a kitchen knife. Sharpening a kitchen knife is kind of difficult. He's doing that over and over and over again for 40 hours after having been able to use a power hammer. Um, for me, I don't really need to do that, but at the same time, I don't have to actually go from like, bars of steel this big to a long bar. I started with a big bar and then I just used a grinder to break it down. So, um, yeah, it's a little cheating on my end, but hey, it's what I got and it's what I can do at my house. So, uh, yeah, pretty fun. Um, so a katana actually has a core, um, I can actually do a little diagram of that. Um, okay. So, I'll probably be So a katana takes and um, do, 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 do. they take and they do kind of a massive thing. So this guy's doing it by hand. That's really hard. Um, so he's doing this by hand, which means that he is taking and doing all that stuff that the guy was doing with a power hammer with just a uh, hammer. So what they take with a katana and they actually make a uh, kind of a tower of iron ore. So they go and they collect a bunch of black iron sand from some places. And they put it in a tower full of coal. And they light the coal on fire and they pump air in for days. And then all of the iron melts down into a big pit at the bottom. Um, when they've done that, they effectively pay someone to take a hammer and smash at it until it breaks into a bunch of different pieces. Um, then you have the mild steel, you have the hard steel, and all that. And then the guy will take and make bars of mild steel and hard steel. Um, he'll take and, kind of like I said, the, the really soft metals in the middle so that when you smash something with the sword, it deflects instead of breaks. Um, they'll take the really cheap steel and they'll put it in the middle of the sword and then they'll wrap it in like a clamshell of Damascus steel that is uh, so layered and really high quality steel. Um, so the end you end up with a, uh, a middle like bar of cheap steel surrounded by a nice little shell of really nice looking and very, uh, very, very good um, strong steel. So they're currently just hammering away at this and this is the old fashioned Yeehaw Samurai way of doing things. Um, this guy is probably a washer. Um, so he'll take, and his job is to take and effectively rub it against the sandstone for hours on end. Um, and this is the way the Japanese did it, as opposed to just using a, a power grinder like the rest of your machines. But um, yeah, this guy would probably spend hundreds of hours um, getting a real katana down to the, the level at which you were able to do stuff. Um, I guess talking about grinds on blades, um, this throwing knife that I made, food knife, whatever. Um, by the way, this is a spoon, again, from my mother's kitchen that she doesn't know I'm but uh, that's the whole thing I do. Um, this thing is actually kind of like a teardrop shape on my um, So that's because when I throw it in the tree, I don't want it to break. Um, so it's a purposely fat, but you would never use it to like, cut or anything. Uh, you never use it to dice anything. Um, so that is as opposed to the knife chunk that we're so aptly playing with, which is flat ground. Um, so this guy, if you were to break this in half, it would look like a triangle. Um, so I took it from an eighth of an inch to the edge, and then it goes all the way down, almost in a wedge shape. Um, so that's far more what your kitchen knife would be like. Um, because a kitchen knife, you want to be able to slice up, you want to be able to do stuff pretty finely, um, and you're not throwing any trees all the time, unless you're me. Um, so this guy, a katana, is actually usually a, um, a flat knife. Um, so they have to take it and they have to remove quite a bit of metal. Um, again, I cheat because the, uh, the little boot knife that I have, I really just had to kind of like grind, 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 grind until I kind of made a curve looking thing and called it a day. Uh, whereas this guy has to actually take it up. Stuff on our so, yeah, this guy is uh, probably finishing it up right about now. He's going to make the uh, actual handle. This is actually pretty cool, and I've done this before. Um, you take and cut a bunch of paper and leather, and you layer it together on top of a bunch of wood. Um, and then he does the classic like uh, ribbon, you kind of cross the ribbon every other way, and you wrap it around. Um, and that's a really interesting skill to learn. It's also all for cheap fit, there's no glue. Um, so it's interesting because if you do it right, the camera stays on. If you do it wrong, you swing at a tree and then the sword blade goes 
flying in the forest and went through a hedge. Uh, so do not try it at home. Um, so this guy's actually, yeah, currently that's a bunch of, uh, actually this is the same stuff my wallet's made out of. That is Stingray Leather. Um, so they use that because it's really uh, strong and it doesn't compress and it's made of calcium. Um, so, and then the guy's going to take and he's going to spend quite a long time wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. And then at the end, they'll assemble this sort of and puts on this thing, which is like a tank that my mic has. Um, and then on top of that, he's going to wedge on a couple of washers to keep in place. He's going to take the handle, he ramps on the handle, and then the, uh, the thing kind of gets stamped in place. And then he's probably going to use a pin uh, to go in a hole and then hold the thing on. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is a come on. That's where this is really fine because it cooled fast when you punched it. And this is the, uh, not cheaper steel, but that's the steel that cools slower. Um, so it's interesting that it just so happens you can see this difference. Um, so that's really, really hard steel. And then this is the softer steel that would prevent it from actually breaking. So that's a samurai sword. And it's a little different than um, it's a little different than uh, a European sword because it is a, a just different thing. There wasn't as much like plate armor there. So you were just slicing through leather and stuff. Um, so it's it's pretty interesting. It's a different type of thing. I've done it a couple times and it's not my favorite, I guess, but um, it's interesting in and of itself. Any other questions? So that's, I guess, kind of in the domain of blacksmithing. Um, 
Um, beyond that, it's really like taught patience because you can take and you can like slap together something, but it won't look really good, um, and it won't be very interesting or fun. Um, so the fact that I'm okay listening to an audiobook and spending 30 hours short on something uh, is very admirable, I guess. Um, and then, I don't know, it's also honestly my heart. Even that little tie tack, which I do need back from 